Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I am going to give you a introduction to data transfers in assembly. So let's begin. Okay, T data transfers basically means that we're going to be moving data from one place to another, from a memory location to a register, from a register to a memory location, um, from a register to a register. And it's just moving data around on the CPU or in RAM. Okay, in order to do that, we're going to need to write things in our code called instructions. An instruction is a statement that is executed once the program has been assembled. Instructions are going to contain four pieces. They'll have an optional label, a required mnemonic, usually some operands, and an optional comment. Let's look at the syntax for that. Right, so everything in the square brackets is optional, right? So mnemonics are the basically the instructions or the keywords uh, within the language. Um, we'll look at some examples of those things in a moment. Okay, so a label is an identifier that acts as a place marker for instructions and data. A mnemonic is a short word that identifies an instruction, as I just mentioned, and there's a whole bunch of them. Operands are values used for input or output for an instruction. And comments, notes for human consumption, right? Purely for uh, the programmer to read. Uh, they, they're going to be ignored by the assembler. So here are some examples of labels. Here we're creating a variable named count that is a double word and it's initialized to 100. This is an example of a data label. This would be found in the data segment of your assembly program. Here we have a code label and this would be located in the code segment of your program. All right, so here are some example mnemonics. There's a whole lot more than just these, but here's a few we can get started with. MOV, that allows us to move one value to another. For example, we can move an integer into a register or the contents of one register to another. Add allows us to add two values together. Sub finds the difference. Mole multiplies two values. JMP allows you to jump to a new location. JMP and its relatives are what we use for flow control within an assembly program. The call mnemonic is what we use when we want to call a procedure. In other words, when we want to call a function. Here are some example operands for you, right? We've got an integer literal, 96, an integer expression, 2 plus 4, EAX, which is a register, and then a variable named count. All right, so let's look at a few example instructions and then we'll write a sample program. All right, here we're going to move the integer literal 32 into register EAX. Here we're going to add 4 to that value that's inside of register EAX. So in this case, we would have 36 in the AX after these two instructions execute. Here we're calling a procedure named foo. Here we're taking the contents of EAX and storing it into a variable named temp. Okay, so let's go ahead and write a sample assembly program using what we've learned so far. Okay, so let's create a new project and I'll select MASM and I'll call this demo and we'll click OK. Okay, and since I already set this up in a previous tutorial video, I'm all ready to go. I already have my template here to get me started. So what I'm going to do in this simple example is I'm going to create a memory location a variable to store a total and then we'll just add three values together okay and store it inside that memory location so let's go ahead and 
define some variable using a data label. So I'll call this um, tote, right? And I'll make it a double word. And I will initialize it with uh, nothing. I'll leave it uninitialized. That's what that question mark is for. Okay, now I have that variable. So now let's write some instructions. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to move some values into registers and add them together, okay? So let's go ahead and move into the EAX register uh, 10, okay? So here's one instruction. Uh, the Remember that with instructions, a label is optional. I didn't feel the need to have a label here. So I have my mnemonic move and I've got two operands, EAX and 10, and I'll include a comment, right? Comments are optional, but always a good idea. So we're moving 10 into the AX register, okay? To the EAX register, let's be precise. Okay, now what I wanna do is I will add, I don't know, 12 to that value inside that register. So I'll use the mnemonic for the add uh, instruction. And so I'm going to add into EAX 12, right? So let's add 12 to EAX, right? So that means that the current value in there is going to be 22. Okay, and then let us move another value into a separate register. Let's move into EBX um, 4, okay? So this is going to store four in the EBX register. And then what I'll do is I'll add to the EAX register the contents of the EBX register. So this is going to add four to EAX, which means that we're going to have a total inside of EAX now of 26. Okay. And once I've done that, let's store that total inside of our variable total. Okay, by using the move mnemonic, or the move instruction. So move into total, uh, the contents of EAX. Okay. So move contents of EAX into variable total. Okay, so once we've done that, we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and test this, I'll save it. And then we'll run the debugger to see how all the memory locations are changing. So I'm gonna go ahead and run to line 12, okay. And when I do that, my registers window should pop up and there it is, right? So right now, EAX has got garbage in it, EBX has got garbage in it. Um, let's add a watch here to my total variable. Okay, so now we can see that yeah, it just happens to have zero inside of it, but I didn't initialize it explicitly with anything. Okay, um, and to keep everything on the same screen, I guess, let's go ahead and add watches for EAX and EBX so we can kind of see everything on the same screen. So add a watch for that and add a watch for EBX. Okay, I think that's all of them, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, so now we'll be able to see these variables uh, changing, these memory locations changing as we execute. So let's go ahead and step into by hitting F11 and you're going to see that arrow move to line 14. That means that the line 13 instruction has been executed. We can see that EAX now contains 10. If you look over in the, in the watch window there, the red uh, 10 appears, right? So now let's go ahead and do the next instruction. So we'll hit step into and line 14 executed so we just added 12 to eax so eax has been updated to 22. then let's move four into the ebx register and hitting f11 you're going to see that ebx has its value updated now we're going to use the add instruction to add the contents of ebx to eax right so when we do that you're going to see that eax becomes 26 and then finally we're going to move EAX into the variable that we created named total, right? And so you'll see that total is gonna get updated to uh, 26, okay? All right, great. So there's our quick little example of doing data transfer, very simple. 
Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have these demonics. We're going to have some operands. Optionally, we'll have some some uh, comments, and that's how we can move data around. Okay. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. So let's go ahead and summarize. We introduced the idea of transferring data in assembly. We defined an instruction and saw its syntax. Part of the syntax that we talked about were labels, mnemonics, operands, and comments. And finally, to illustrate these ideas, we wrote a very simple sample program. If you found this video useful, please consider hitting that subscribe button, giving it a thumbs up, really appreciate it, helps out a lot. And as always, if you're a student of mine and you have any further questions, please feel free. And as always, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions, please feel free to stop by my office hours or shoot me an email. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.